Starting in Conway, making my way round Puffin Island, down the Menai Straits and all the way to Carnarvon. The goal is a night to anchor at Upper Menai. I departed the Gamway Marina at five in the morning, in the pitch black. My route was northwesterly and give Puffin Island a wide berth. I motored through the voyage system in the dark till I got in front of Conway Mountains. With just the jib out, I noted that I was easily powered, so I turned off the engine. I had a beautiful sail in the dark as dawn came about as I was heading towards Puffin Island. The waters heading in towards Puffin Sound can often be well confused. Wind, waves and tide all travelling in different directions. On this particular day, everything seemed to suit me just fine. I've plumbed lots of spare time into this passage, so at no point should I be over canvassed or rushing. I give the island itself a very wide berth. I seem to think there's a lot of lobster pots appearing around it now, and when a lobster pot's been left and has weed on top of it, it's extremely hard to see. At this point you're just heading in between the lighthouse on your starboard side and on your port side there's a red can, a huge concrete red can and that uh, lights up the way through the sound. You know as soon as you've gone through the sound the sea state changes completely. So in your head you know the kettle will be going on once you've cleared the sound. Running under the flying jib alone is a very comfortable motion on the boat and not sickly like it can be on some others. This is the passage I plan on taking through the sound. It seems to be like magic but it's almost a different world. I've passed through the sound and the sea falls flat. It is now wind over tide so there is a little bit of a break and wave to it, but it's on a slight, so it's not really noticeable. The further you progress down the straits, you find that this little bit of a swell that's left just vanishes bit by bit. At least the galley will be very stable now, so we can go and get that kettle on. There's large sandbanks in between Puffin Island and Conway Mountains which dry out uh, low water Well, they are the responsible item for keeping this fetch down. Puffin Island is just out of view to my starboard at the left of the screen and Conway Mountains are just out of view to my port which is right of the screen. I plan on saying hello to my brother on his boat Tarka in Menai and having a bit of breakfast before moving on to Carnarvon. This is me, Seema Chile and my brother on Tarka in Victoria Dock in Carnarvon, a lovely dock. It was that hot in the sun I even got time to put my sun on and up and as the sun went down have a few drinks. The next morning it was absolutely beautiful, clear skies. It was still blowing about 18 to 20 knots outside and we had wind over tide. We would be turning to port when we left the dock and heading toward Abermenai. So it made sense to wait a little bit of time for the tide to turn 
and that would flatten the water out and the tide would be in our favour as well as the wind. Get a load of this hoist, block and tackles. You don't see many of them. Men making things go up and down, them were the days. Carnarvon is a truly beautiful marina in an absolutely beautiful town. Oh well, tide has turned, time to go. Must leave this place and get ourselves to Abermenai for our anchorage for the night. We've had the luxury of being berthed on a hammerhead, so no hard manoeuvres to leave. Coil me bow line as usual and throw it on the deck. And then coil me stern line and throw that in. I like it when the wind's not blowing too much because the boat's very easy to handle. She's docile and slow, but very predictable. She's in a stern with the helm central and if you look at the bow, it's moving to port. It will be grabbed by a little bit of wind in a bit, but I will help it with the helm shortly. I shall push the helm over to starboard now and then start making my manoeuvre. I make good use of forward and reverse and I keep the stern of the boat about two foot from the finger berth at all times. I'm making use of both wind and engine thrust to crank the boat anti-clockwise. The hull leaves a slick on the water as she cranks on my starboard bow. As my stern passes perpendicular to the hammerhead, I know it's about time to look the other way and save the gates in line. Looks all clear, so time to proceed. I can see a couple of masts outside and I'm just wondering whether anybody's on the way in. Nope, it looks clear. My boom, when it's got the cover on and the sails down, is right in my line of sight when I'm standing on the cockpit sole. A quick wave to the dockmaster and off I go. That's me, back out into the Menai Straits. All I need to do now is get rid of the engine and um, get some sail up. Notice how flat the straits have become now that the tide is running along with the wind and there's still about 18 to 20 knots of wind. I think it's time for a quick wave to the nice man who's stood by so I can exit. That's my brother in Tarka dead ahead of me on my starboard bow. I'm putting a bit of stay sail out. I don't need much power, I just need a little bit of steerage going down the straits because the water itself is doing over two knots. My brother seems to be having the same idea and unfails a bit of his Genoa. It really is lovely as soon as you switch an engine off on a sailing boat. A quick look ahead to spot where the next boy is. We don't want to be running up any sandbanks now. Quick course alteration. Time, I think, to make the boat a little bit more ship shape. I've still got my lines out and my fenders out and everything needs to come back home. I can see my brother ahead of me on my starboard bow and on my port bow a bit further away. There seems to be a boat sailing towards me or motoring towards me. The straits are very peaceful and as long as you pick the wind and the tides correctly, the waters are very peaceful too.
Abermenai the destination. The boat that was motoring towards me wasn't actually motoring, he was anchored. They seem to come at you so quickly when they're anchored, when the water's moving. Bye bye Carnarvon, thank you for the stay. The Menai Straits from the water is a truly beautiful place. I am always in awe of its beauty. Under the water, however, there are plenty of sandbanks to catch you out. The gap in the land dead ahead of me is Bellum Point. That's the way out of Carnarvon Bar. The land on my starboard side where you can see my brother's mast at. That's Abamenai Point. That's where we actually go to anchor. Those hills that you actually see are the protection in the anchorage from southwesterly winds. Abamenai is a lot closer than it looks on the camera. So I've started the engine, put her in gear and I'm putting the sail away. This red can marks the end of the bank but it doesn't actually mark the end of the bank it just marks the end of the bank if you travel in the straits in other words the sand is all on the starboard side as you see from here of the mark but it protrudes past the mark if you look at the speed that the land is moving behind the red can it will give you an indication to how fast the water is flowing On my chart plotter, it shows the sandbank doesn't pass the red can. This is not true. If you were to make your turn directly after passing the red can, you will definitely end up high and dry. If you get an aerial view from any source, you will see that the sandbank sticks out way past the red can. Try making your turn as close to the land as you possibly can. After passing the red can, I start turning the boat towards Abermenai. Ferry gliding, if you like, with an eye on the depth sounder. This area can be home to some strange currents on springs. Eddies and little whale pools and the like which might take your boat direction momentarily off course, so you need to be eyes on at all times. You must also remember, because of the speed of the current, that you might be pointing in one direction, but you're not going that way. Abermenai, however, is not fixed at all by time. You can come in and out of here with the tide going in, the tide coming out, slack high, slack low. So there's lots of choices. Just because we've done it this way doesn't mean you do have to. I am actually a lot closer to the land than the camera makes it look like I am. That's the way out to Carnarvon Bar. My brother in Tarka is actually in the anchorage at that point there. As I make my turn into the anchorage, there will be an increased flow of water coming out of the actual anchorage here. That will try and push you into a powerful ebb. Keep your engine revs up and keep an eye transit on the land at any point to make sure that you are moving forward. The shore Abermenai is quite progressive, so what you see is what you get. You need to make sure 100% that the boat is gathering ground at all times. Use your eyes on the land. Never take it for granted that you're doing five knots through the water so that you're moving over the ground. Get up and look and increase the revs if you have to. 
The land on my port side is about 40 metres from me. There's quite a lot of features on the land which you can use as transit points against the beach to ensure that you are actually moving. You won't believe just how tranquil this all will become when the water goes down and the sandbanks come up. It looks like my brother Antarka has dropped his anchor now, so I need to pick a place somewhere either in front of him or behind him to drop mine in the deep trough which runs along parallel to the land. You can now see with the other side of the sandbank that the red boy protected us from in the first place. All just looks like open water. Just looks like. Well, it's time, I think, to pick a position to anchor in. This is my favorite position at the end of the deep section. But I've anchored up here before now and it's been nice as well. Bilge keelers, however, tend to anchor over the beach and dry out on the beach. But unfortunately you can't do that in a keelboat. Or at least not without your legs, because I do come here with my legs and I do dry out here. I do, however, eventually drop my hook in somewhere I'm happy. The wind is blowing. There is still a freshness to the air. I believe the wind strength's only going to die down, and I know the tide's only going to die down, so I'm probably against the maximum forces I'm going to receive today. So I set my sights on the land, pick a couple of transits and watch eagerly to see if I'm moving at all. There's one person who won't be happy should I drag. So I best keep my eye out. 
The waves are following with the wind like they normally do, yet the boat is staying rowed to the tide. So I'll point in the direction of the current is coming from, and you can see by the anchor chain that the current is still quite strong and moving quite quickly. I am, however, in the position I want to be, which is right at the end of the deep section. I feel very comfortable here. As soon as the sandbanks start to appear, the sea state changes completely. A sandbank here and a sandbank there breaks down the fetch. And although there's still a bit of wind, the sea starts to fall very slight. This is the sandbank that the buoy protects you from, as I was telling you earlier, there's the buoy, way past the end of the sandbank at the moment. The beach starts now getting a bit closer, and the ebb seems to run off by you, so the boat starts to turn a little into the wind. But there is still a small amount of current. My chain is near vertical now, which means there ain't that much drag. The sun, making its last appearance, shines through the porthole and lights up my drinks cabinet. It must be telling me something. Oh, how this sandbank has grown. And as you can see, it's way past the boy now. There's the boy, and the bank just goes on and on and on and on and on. And that's why we've got to go all the way up to the land to make the turn. Still, it's a fair gap to come in. Well, I don't think I'll be rowing ashore tonight. A little cold for me to be going ashore for a barbecue, I think, and a little late at night. And I think the sun is just about to leave us once and for all for today. Well, at least we've made it to our anchorage and the last of the sun shines through the window. As the sandbanks continue to grow, the water becomes flatter and flatter to the point that you don't know that you're at anchor anymore. You could be sitting on the land. Look how the sandbank has grown. It's a hell of a length now from what it was earlier. And there's the boy. And it just keeps going and going and going. It's quite a big bank, but it's still quite a big gap. Right, that's about it from Abamenai and the Anchorage. I think it's time that I should settle down for the night. I'd like to thank you for having the staying power to watch my videos. I'm sure they're not that exciting. I'd also like to thank the people who've liked my videos and have subscribed for my videos. It don't get much better than this.